Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 13th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, DC. Today, Microsoft Patch Tuesday, we got a about 36 different vulnerabilities that are being addressed in these patches. In addition, of course, we got an update for Flash. The lion's share of the vulnerabilities goes to the scripting engine. We do have, for example, information disclosure vulnerabilities, memory corruption vulnerabilities that typically affects your browsers. If there was a surprise among these updates, then it is an update for Windows RAS. Windows RAS is the routing and remote access service. It's not enabled by default, but if you have have it enabled if your system is accessible to RPC then there is a possible remote code execution vulnerability Microsoft rated this one only as important I think it sort of deserves a critical not sure why Microsoft stuck with important here probably because this particular component is not enabled by default and I don't think it's actually enabled that often in addition we also have two vulnerabilities that are being addressed in Microsoft's malware protection engine. These are these issues that have been patched last Friday. And again, you don't really have to apply a regular Windows patch to fix those issues. Instead, these updates are being pushed as part of signature updates that are being released daily for the malware protection engine. So nothing really too overly exciting here. None of the vulnerabilities being addressed here had been disclosed publicly or had been exploited in the past. So unless you have a system that has the routing and remote access service enabled, I would just follow your standard patch procedure. No real reason to expedite anything here. And since it's getting easier and easier to obtain TLS certificates for your website, there is also more phishing going on that does use websites that are protected by TLS. This will make it even more difficult for the user to figure out that a particular website is fraudulent. Now, to fight this, certificate authorities have released extended validation certificates about 10 years ago. So in order to obtain an extended validation certificate, you will need to actually prove that you are associated with a particular organization, not just that you're owning a particular domain name. This particular system has, however, come under attack recently by researchers who successfully managed to register misleading corporations in order to obtain extended validation certificates to impersonate well known entities. The latest example is a researcher who registered in Kentucky, a company called Stripe Inc. Well, uh, there is also the well-known credit card processor Stripe who is registered in Delaware. Of course, uh, this detail isn't really displayed in the URL bar and this researcher was able to buy an extended validation certificate that did list Stripe Inc. as the owner of the particular site. Overall, of course, this isn't really a violation of what extended validation certificates are trying to accomplish. There will always be name collisions in company names and extended validation certificates are not really trying to resolve that. Instead, the only thing they're proving is that a particular website is associated with a particular organization. So the real problem here is not so much EV certificates or TLS, it's just the simple fact that there is no easily recognizable unique identifier for organizations. And realistically, I doubt that there will be a lot of attackers that will go through the pain and the expense of setting up a corporation and then purchasing a TLS certificate if on the other hand, you can't just get a domain name that 
that looks pretty good and obtain a free TLS certificate from a place like Let's Encrypt and pretty much full users just the same. And if you wonder why F5 and Cisco all published patches that fixed TLS vulnerabilities over the last couple weeks, there are more details available now about a new variety of the Bleichenbacher attack. The basic issue here is a well-known padding oracle attack. Now the basic attack is quite old and it has been patched and fixed a numerous time. This is yet another way how a couple of TLS implementations didn't quite deal with this problem correctly. It only really affects systems that use RSA for encryption, not necessarily for digital signatures. And now most modern TLS implementations do prefer elliptic curves for encryption. So in this case, you're not affected. But then again, there may be some downgrade possibilities if you're still offering but not preferring RSA algorithms for encryption. Some of the implementations that are affected, I mentioned that was F5 and Cisco. Wolf SSL is also affected. Open SSL is not affected by this latest round of flaws. However, apparently Facebook used a custom version of Open SSL that was affected. This new variety of this attack goes under the name of robot attack, if you ever come across this particular term. And you may want to consider turning off RSA encryption algorithms in your TLS servers. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.